Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Japanese summers are typically quite hot and extremely humid, so here are 10 tips to help you survive summer in Japan. The heat and humidity ranges depending on location in Japan, but usually it's around like 80s and 90s, can get into the hundreds in Fahrenheit, and it also can reach up to 100% humidity, which is like living in a sauna. I'm pretty lucky in that Yokohama and Tokyo is generally really mild when it comes to weather. And the humidity is also a little bit lower than a lot of places in Japan and it's by the ocean so there's like usually a pretty nice breeze. But my sister lived in Maebashi in Gunma Prefecture which is known for being awful and it literally feels like you are being steamed alive. So here are some tips and items to help you get through this hot, humid season. For some of the items that I can find on Amazon, I will be linking it below in the description. So the first thing is an item that everyone in Japan loves so much, which are Gatsby cooling wipes. These are seriously amazing. And shout out to Reina for getting me a pack of these. But they are packs that have little sheets of facial paper. These little papers wipe off sweat, oil, dirt, and it has some sort of really refreshing minty ingredient that super cools you down. My favorite is using it to like wipe it around the back of my neck. It feels so good. You can buy this at any konbini, convenience store, or at any pharmacy. Tip number two, which is probably the most important, is stay hydrated. In Japan, you walk a lot, which means you are in the sun a lot, so heat stroke, sometimes it ends in death, is actually extremely, extremely common in Japan in the summer. So in order to combat that, you want to stay as hydrated as possible. Luckily, this is pretty easy in Japan because you can either bring your own water in a water bottle, buy water or drinks at any of the zillion vending machines, or go to a konbini, which also has all of the drinks you could think of and more water. Aside from water keeping you hydrated, there are sports drinks like Pocari Sweat or Aquarius that are really good at replenishing the salts that you lose when you sweat. They have those in almost every vending machine and at the konbini, they're anywhere, so I recommend getting that if you want something other than water. Be careful with getting like too many teas or coffees or sodas that can dehydrate you further. Although Japanese people do drink a lot of mugicha, which is cold barley tea, which they say is hydrating, but water is definitely more hydrating. Also, some konbini in the summer even sell frozen drinks. Tip number three, towels. Carrying small towels in Japan is not only useful in the summer, but year-round. One of the reasons being in some bathrooms, there are not paper towels or hand dryers. Um, so towels are useful for drying off your hands, which I did talk about in a What I Need to Pack for Japan video previously, which you could see up here if you click it. But in the summer, their use is definitely a lot more extended. I recommend bringing a towel that's probably a little bigger than this, but I mean, even if it's thin, it's good. You could use it to wipe off sweat. You could put water on it, which keeps it cold and like put it around your neck. It feels really, really good and it helps you really stay cool. Also, if you have access, you could even refrigerate it or freeze it after you put water on it and it keeps it colder longer while you're out. This is just like really multi-purpose and useful. And number four is sun protection. Again, like I said, in Japan you are walking around a lot, which means a lot of outside exposure, which means you're in the sun a lot. And that means sunscreen is really, really important. I use this one, but what I recommend, especially if you sweat a lot, is to wear like the sport ones, because then it doesn't come off, but don't forget to reapply it as well. Also, stay out of the sun as much as you can, sit in the shade. And also hats help a lot. Many people also use umbrellas or parasols when walking around to keep themselves shaded and to cool themselves off. Number five is bug repellent. There are natural ways to repel bugs and there's bug spray, but whatever you do, bug repellent is important. Japanese mosquitoes are vicious and hungry, even in the city and especially in the countryside. Like, I don't get bit by bugs very often, but Japanese mosquitoes will still bite me. If you do get bit, which you will, they actually have um, anti-itch patches you could put on. They have ones that are cooling as well. And they also have roll-on anti-itch liquid, which is what I usually use. Those items you can get at any konbini or pharmacy. And number six are fans. 
folding fans, electric fans, handheld whatever fans are saviors. I usually use folding fans. They're small, they're light, they're easy to carry. You don't even need a purse. You could like slip it in your pocket. But creating your own wind makes a huge difference. You can buy fans like these at almost anywhere in Japan. You can buy them at the dollar store, you can buy them at the konbini, you can buy them almost at any store that sells anything because they are seasonal items, so they actually make some pretty cool specialty designs. For example, this Tamagotchi one that I got at the Tamagotchi store in Harajuku. Love these. Number seven, deodorant wipes. These are useful if you're the type that sweats off your deodorant during the day or if you're feeling a little stinky. The good thing about the wipes, which are similar to like facial wipes, is that they don't get bad. If you take your stick deodorant around, even the small ones, they will melt. It is so hot, they'll melt. So these are sheets that look like facial sheets and you can just wipe them on yourself. It'll reapply the deodorant, it'll help deodorize you and relieve a nice smell on you for the rest of the day. It's really useful if you are gonna be out all day long from morning to night and you don't have time to go home and freshen up. It's a really, really easy way to freshen up. People on the train will thank you. And number eight, refreshing water sprays. These are small pocket-sized sprays that leave a mist on you so you cool off via evaporation. It doesn't seem like much, like you think that you could just like get wet and cool off, but the thing is if you get yourself too wet, it doesn't dry fast enough because it's so humid out. So because the spray is so light and fine, it doesn't make you wet, but it still cools you down and evaporates fast enough. I use the Evian one because I use it mostly on my face to cool me off and I don't want to put all sorts of stuff on me, but they have like Seabreeze and other brands that um, you could spray all over your body. I use it often on my arms too, um, but they have ones that also have like a deodorizer and a scent, so it keeps you smelling fresh. But since I don't usually want the ones with the scent since I use deodorizing wipes, I use the scentless one and use it mostly on my face and arms. It's pretty amazing. Number nine is wear your clothing in layers. You want to wear light clothing that you can layer because even though it's a zillion degrees outside and so humid, inside you betcha they're gonna have the AC on 50 and it's gonna be so dry. That way when you go into like a 50 degree building, you could put on something over it to help regulate your body temperature so it's not so extreme because the extreme temperatures actually makes a lot of people sick. And as far as keeping yourself cool, wearing breathable fabrics like cotton or linen is really nice. And also Uniqlo makes Aerism, which I don't even know what it's made out of, but it is super breathable. If it gets wet or sweaty, it is like dry fit, so it actually just evaporates right off you. Be prepared for hot outside, cold inside. Unless you're in the countryside where there's no AC. And number 10 is my favorite. I actually asked in a couple of Facebook groups to make sure I wasn't missing anything for this video because I wanted it to be really comprehensive and to see which ones were the most important because what can be important for everybody might not be important for me or vice versa. And number 10 is guts and determination because that is how you become Hokage. But even if you're not becoming Hokage, you just sort of have to deal with it, which is a very Japanese, Japanese gaman mindset. You just sort of bear through it. Either way, if you are going to Japan to visit in the summer or if you are moving there and you're preparing yourself for the summer, hopefully these 10 tips can help you out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or if you have other tips that I did not mention, let me know in the comments and let everyone else know because I'm sure it'll be really useful. Thank you so much again for watching and good luck out there in this hot summer weather. And I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see other Japan, Japanese food, food, whatever related content. And thank you again for watching, matane.